Well, hello, friends at Park Church. My name is Reverend Sal Sapienza. I'm the pastor of the Douglas UCC, and I'm so grateful to be joining all of you once again this week for another in a series of reflections based upon my new book, Childish Thinking, How the Church Keeps Us Stuck in Sunday School. Last week, we put our focus on our understanding of God and how that understanding has grown and developed since our childhood. Today, we're going to be putting our focus on our understanding of Jesus. Most of us who grew up in the Christian church were taught that Jesus looks something like this, a blonde-haired, blue-eyed, white guy. The image of a white Jesus was what we saw depicted on our stained glass windows at church, in our illustrated children's Bibles, in our Sunday school classes, and in countless Hollywood movies. But this image is not at all what Jesus looked like. A few years ago for National Geographic magazine, a group of the world's leading theologians, historians, and anthropologists all got together to form a more accurate depiction of Jesus. And this is what they came up with. When you close your eyes to pray to Jesus, is this the guy you see in your mind's eye? For many Christians in America today, this is the kind of guy they don't want walking around their neighborhood at night or sitting next to them on an airplane. This is the kind of guy many Christians in America today want to ban from entering into our country. A few years ago, I gave a sermon called Jesus Wasn't White, and it remains one of the most viewed videos on YouTube with more than 230,000 views and more than 4,000 comments, most of them negative ones. Many of the commenters have asked, what does it matter what Jesus looked like? Well, I think it matters a great deal because I believe that if we had all grown up with a more accurate picture of who Jesus really was, we would be much more compassionate and concerned about the least of these in our midst. Because when we saw the poor, the homeless, the foreigner, the other, we would clearly see the Christ in our midst. The truth of the matter is, that Jesus was a poor, dark-skinned, Middle Eastern refugee whose name was Yeshua. He spoke Aramaic, and he challenged the religious and political authorities of his day. Jesus wasn't killed because he was going around preaching peace, joy, and love. Jesus was killed because he was leading a popular social movement of the marginalized and the oppressed. This movement was seeking to establish a new kingdom, one where the sick would be cared for, the hungry would be fed, the stranger would be welcome, the last would be first, and the least of these would be given the most importance. All of that was a threat to the powers that be in Jesus' day. And that's why they needed to silence him. So the image that many Christians in America have today of the flag-waving, gun-toting, patriotic Jesus has simply got to go. The contemporary Christian author, John Pavlovitz, who came to speak here at our church a few years ago, said that most Christians in America wouldn't even recognize Jesus if he came back today. Pavlovitz writes, Jesus was a progressive. He started a revolutionary underground movement. Jesus championed the poor and opposed the powerful. He freely gave food to the hungry and care to the sick. He welcomed women in ministry and treated them as equals. He decried personal and systemic violence. He condemned the hoarding of wealth. And he was an activist for the common good. That's not the Jesus we heard about in Sunday school, is it? 
But that's who Jesus was. And if we are to truly call ourselves followers of his way, then we better know who he really was and what he was truly all about. And so, my friends, I'd like to invite you this week to pray with other images of Jesus, ones that are different from the ones you've held since childhood. There are so many beautiful images you can find online of Jesus from other cultures and traditions. Make them a part of your meditation each and every day this week. In closing, would you please join me now in reciting together our prayer for this week's reflection. Rabbi Yeshua, loving teacher and way shower, help me to see your face more clearly as I come to a better understanding of who you really were and what your teachings were really all about. I come to see that although you are worthy of praise, your hope is that I follow more closely in your steps. Help me to speak out in the face of injustice, to speak truth to the powers that be, and to continue your work of building a just world for all. Amen.